In a previous episode, I reviewed the Mini Pet by Tynemouth Software. This one I had to assemble myself from a kit, and I didn't care much for the little keyboard that came with it, so I decided to build my own from Cherry Switches. And then, in a follow-up video to that, I decided to build a custom case out of a modern Commodore 64 case, and ended up with a pretty nice little pet in an all-in-one case. Well, a few months ago, they sent me an updated version of the Mini Pet. Now, this one's called the Mini Pet 4080D, and it comes with a number of new enhancements. Now, I'm guessing the name is derived from the fact that it supports both 40 and 80 columns, and the D probably comes from the fact that it has a built-in SD card slot on the side. A disk drive, if you will, much like the Commodore 128D is so named because it included a built-in disk drive. Okay, so let's have a look at the new Mini Pet. Now, uh, one of the first things that I noticed about the board is that uh, most of the chips are now surface mount. Uh, now, they're not FPGAs or anything like that. They're, they're still real chips. I mean, uh, for example, I mean, you still have a real uh, 6502 microprocessor here. It's just in a very different package. Uh, this is very much what I had envisioned for the Commander six, uh, X16 to be, and it's like its second generation if we you know, assuming we ever get there, uh, is, to, is to go to all surface mount like this. This probably reduces cost quite a bit. Uh, they still have two DIP package uh, chips on here, which are the uh, system ROMs and the uh, character ROM, uh, which is uh, kind of neat. But uh, but yeah, you'll notice there's not that many uh, through-hole um, uh, solder joints anywhere on this thing. Okay, the second thing, and I think perhaps the more important thing, is that it has a built-in SD card slot. Uh, so that means you no longer need... Uh, to buy one of these separately, uh, you basically got the the, the built-in drive there, which is that's really cool. And you can actually configure this as uh, drive eight, nine, ten, or eleven uh, with the uh, jumpers or sorry dip switch settings that you see here. So that's pretty cool. And uh, on the side, you get uh, composite output, uh, a power socket, and you get two buttons. You get a reset button here, and this button will bring you up to the disk drive menu, which I'll show you later. Oh, and uh, last but not least, I'm just going to point out uh, that this is actually the little built-in piezo speaker. It's uh, not terribly loud, but it, you know, it does the job. My first thought was that I'd take this mini pet case I already built and just upgrade the board with this new one, but that's not going to happen. Uh, as you can see, if I try to line up the ports on this thing, the board would be hanging out at the side of the case. Um, I think what this boils down to is that there are two styles of board that they sell. Uh, one is a hobbyist board, which is what I had before, and then this version of the board is made to fit inside of a real pet case. I have another problem too, which is uh, I have no keyboard that will work with this. Uh, the older mini pet had a female connector for the keyboard, and as you can see, this one has a male connector, so I can't even use the little crappy keyboard they originally sent with the first one. Well, I guess I could build a cable or something that would make this work, uh, or um, gut my old one and modify it, but if I have to do any work at all to get the keyboard connected, I'd rather just go ahead and build a proper keyboard. So I got another PCB from Texelec and uh, ordered some more cherry switches, and uh, I won't bore you with the details as it's pretty much the same as last time I did this. However, one thing is different. I couldn't find the exact keycap set I bought before. This one is pretty close, but it's packaged very differently. Um, one interesting thing is that it comes with these little rings, and the manual doesn't say what they're for other than they are optional. Um, my guess is they're for noise reduction, but uh, I'm not going to bother with them. So the next door here is to attach all of these keycaps. Now, of course, uh, just like before, it doesn't really matter what arrangement they go in because I'm going to relabel the tops of the keys anyway. Uh, the important thing is to find keys that are the right size but also belong on the correct row. Um, because if you were to try to use a key from one row on a different row, the slant of the key would be wrong. Anyway, um, here's what it looks like with all of the keys installed. Just like before, I'm going to print my own labels. And I suppose if I did these more regularly, I'd probably order some keycaps that had the right thing printed on them already. But uh, for one-off projects like this, I think this works fine. Although it does take an hour or two to apply the labels to the keys. And yeah, here we go, let's compare with the original keyboard I built, and uh, as you can see, it looks more or less identical. Although one main difference is that this keyboard has a pin header on it where the old one had wire soldered directly to the PCB. I also built this little wooden stand, which uh, makes it a bit more sturdy and provides a better typing angle. I don't have a cable harness of the correct size, so I'm just going to use several of these smaller ones. It should work fine. And then I'm going to use the same little tandy green monochrome monitor that I had used before. And here we go. Uh, lucky for me, it works first time. So uh, this is running in 40 columns mode, and I already knew it was going to be nice and sharp on this little monitor. Another thing I immediately noticed is that the picture is properly centered. If you recall, on the previous model, the picture was off-center to the right, uh, but this model is perfectly centered. 
So let's try 80 columns now. Um, I'll run the same program, and wow, it is amazingly sharp and clear on the CRT. Even though I think most pet software is designed for 40 columns, this is totally awesome. They included this handy cheat sheet that shows you how uh, all the dip switches work, and I noticed there are some built-in tests, so I wanted to try those. And um, this is the character test. This appears to run in 80 columns and just flashes the character set. Kind of boring, so I'll try the other test. Now this one's more interesting. Uh, it appears to be testing all of the features of the board. Again, in 80 columns mode, but uh, this is a very nice diagnostic. I also noticed the little cheat sheet shows that there's a built-in game, so uh, let's give that a try too. The game appears to be related to Cheese and Onion, which is a side-scroller game for the VIC-20, and surprisingly, it runs in 80 columns mode here on the pet. Okay, uh, I wasn't expecting to see parallax scrolling here on the pet. Uh, <laughs> in fact, the platforms themselves appear to smooth scroll. I think they're essentially using the same trick that Robin Harbin developed on the uh, pet for this smooth scrolling demo, which takes advantage of the various Petsky characters, which can be presented in just the right combinations to create this effect. Unfortunately, it does mean the graphics are a bit drab looking because it limits you to just block characters. Personally, I'd prefer to see something more similar to the recent Gianna Sisters that was created using Petsky only. Now, granted, this is on the C64, but I think it would translate well to the pet by making it monochrome, and it'd still be totally playable. Still, it's totally worth a play, and it isn't like there are a whole lot of competing side-scroller games for the pet. So, the new Mini Pet has a built-in SD to pet, so it's not necessary to have any sort of disk drive or an external SD to pet like I had to use on the last version. Also, I should mention, um, there's a regular reset button here, but then there's another button here which is labeled Menu, and it brings up the SD Interfaces menu which allows you to explore the contents of a SD card or various disk images. And yes, I have some great updates to Petsky Robots for the pet, uh, but I'll save that until the end. So, for the moment, let's have a look at these three cassette-based games they sent me. Um, we've already tried Cheese and Chive since it was built into ROM, so we'll put that one to the side, and I guess we'll try Tut Tut. Well, in order to try this, we'll have to connect up my trusty Commodore dataset. Now, this actually takes several minutes to load, which is a bit unusual for pet games, but uh, since this does require 32K, I'm guessing it's a bit larger than your typical pet software that you load from cassette. And here we go. Um, this is a fairly direct conversion from the Sinclair Z uh, ZX81 version of the game. Likewise, uh, 3D Monster Maze also appears to be a direct port from the Sinclair, so uh, let's give it a try. And yep, it works pretty much like you'd expect. Uh, admittedly, it is much easier to play on the pet with a proper keyboard than on a Sinclair ZX81. So, moving on, I wanted to try the mini pet on my regular Samsung color television and see how clear it is. And well, um, it looks exactly like the previous model, except uh, that it is properly centered, of course. Uh, the real test I wanted to see is how legible 80 columns would be on the television. And well, it's not bad. Um, it's certainly nowhere nearly as sharp as uh, on the Tandy Monaco monitor, but it is definitely readable. But the real advantage of the television is that it has sound, and um, we can get sound through the little user port adapter, uh, so I'll connect that up, and then I'll run Shiru's amazing Pulti Robots music demo. It sounds totally badass on an amplified speaker. And just to give you an idea of the difference in volume, I'll unplug from the TV so you can hear only the tiny speaker on the board. So I wanted to try a few more games before I reveal my latest update to Petsky Robots. Now this is called Pet Zombies, and it is very much designed in the spirit of Lemmings, uh, as you can see. <laughs> of course, it's all keyboard controlled, and it takes a bit of getting used to the keyboard layout. And honestly, um, I would have probably used a different layout if I had designed this game, but uh, that's just about the only complaint I have. Otherwise, this game is absolutely amazing, and I highly recommend it. Another game by the same author is uh, Load Runner, and I believe this game actually didn't work correctly when I reviewed the original Mini Pet, but now it works. So I don't know if it's a change in the game software or a change in the Mini Pet, but either way, it works now, so uh, this is another great game. And the last one I'll test is Pet Defender. Uh, this one also works surprisingly well, showing once again that the pet is certainly capable of playing a variety of arcade games uh, if people want to take the challenge to code them. 
Okay, and now it's time to show off my revised version of Petsky Robots. I actually spent a few days updating the code just for the purpose of this review. After all, I created the game originally just for the mini pet. But uh, before we can play the game, I'm going to need to remove the character ROM. And that's because I actually made a custom character set for this game. And then I'm going to need to dump this ROM and examine it. Um, however, I ran into a bit of a surprise upon examination of the ROM. You see, the original pet had a 2 kilobyte character ROM, and it was divided into the uppercase and lowercase character sets, uh, which does require typing a poke statement in order to switch between them. And there were only 128 characters per set because the second half of the character set was reversed in hardware by setting bit 7, meaning the second half would always be a reversed image of the first half. Now, in a Commodore VIC-20 and C64, they used a 4K ROM, and they actually had a full 256 characters for each set, with the second half reversed in the ROM. Of course, these computers could switch the character generator to RAM so you could define your own characters and use all 256 of them. Well, it turns out the Mini Pet also has the full 256 characters in ROM just like this. So there is no hardware reverse, which means I could technically have designed the new character set for 256 characters instead of 128. Of course, if I did that, it would only work on the Mini Pet and not on a real pet. It turns out the Mini Pet uses a 32K EEPROM, and the first half of it's blank. Uh, and then they have the first font here with both sets, and then of course there are a total of four fonts which are selectable uh, by these dip switches we looked at earlier. So, uh, what I did was I replaced the lowercase portion of font 4 with my custom character set. And I also put a custom label on my EEPROM here so I wouldn't get it mixed up with the original. But uh, anyway, let's fire this thing up. So uh, you'll notice it starts up in the regular font, and I did this so that on a real pet you could change the second character set, but leave the default one alone, so it would still run most things just fine. Then when the game starts, it will switch to the new set, and so here we are. Uh, by the way, the game now has 13 maps as compared to the original that just had 9 maps. Now this map is called Bunker, as it mostly takes place underground. Now I'll show you another new feature. Yep, it has an on-screen map now by pressing the home key. And it's made from block characters, so you have to scroll around to see the whole map. Uh, the blinking dot represents your location. And if you press home again, it will show you where all the robots are. So the graphics are noticeably improved over the standard Petsky set. In fact, uh, I'm using most of the same artwork that was used in the Atari 800 version, which had similar restrictions. Unfortunately, there was no way to update the player character itself, as that would require 56 custom characters, um, keeping in mind that these are in ROM and we can't update them on the fly like we do on the Atari. Anyway, so you get improved graphics, an on-screen map, various bug fixes, and of course, four new maps. So uh, it's a free update for anybody who um, has already purchased the game. And uh, there's also a shareware version on my website you can download for free, but uh, doesn't have the custom character set, obviously. All right, and so I am really impressed with the new mini pet. I, I just cannot say enough good things about this uh, product. Now, whether this counts as a paid promotion or not, I'm not sure. Uh, I did not get paid anything to make this video. I'm obviously free to say whatever I wanted about the product. However, they did send me the product for free. So whether that counts as a paid promotion or not, I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, onto a different topic. One of the things I would like to do is make a case for this version as well. Now, I, I decided I would really prefer not to go the same route as that I did with this one. Um, so what I'm looking for is if somebody out there knows how to work with acrylic, like maybe laser cut acrylic or something like that, uh, or has a 3D printer that is big enough that you could make uh, the entire case like as two large like, you know, top and bottom that could go together, um, then uh, if that's you, then uh, get in contact with me by email. And uh, if you'd like to see your work featured in a future video, and uh, we'll see what we can collaborate on that. Um, also, if you want more nerdy material, be sure to check out the Geek Bits podcast, and I'll put a link in the description for that, as always. But that's it for this episode. So as always, thanks for watching.